All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right gentlemen. All right, money, money. All right, money, money. Oh, my name is A.R.B. Boss. Graduation. Hi. So this is very, a very amazing experience for me. Um, how many of you are familiar with beatboxing? Nice, nice, nice. Um, how many of you are familiar with the fact that you beatbox on a daily basis and you don't even know about it? Because the women, when they're mad at the men, they're like, psst, 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 psst. <laughs> I just kick that, and I actually do something very special. I just kick it up an extra notch. And um, just to start off everything, I'm from New York, uh, South Bronx, all from the East Coast. I moved to Las Vegas at the age of about nine or 10 years old. My father was a professional boxer that represented himself for Dominican Republic in the 76 Olympics. So if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. You know, I definitely wouldn't be here. Um, another thing, I got introduced to beatboxing at the age of 16. And that was through a classmate of mine in my freshman year of high school in my government class. This cat was from LA and he got into a lot of trouble and his mother took him and said, go to your father in Las Vegas. So I met him in my class and he kept beatboxing and doing a lot of graffiti. And I was always curious of what he was doing. So I went up to him in the hallways after class one time, one day, and I asked him, hey, what were you doing in class? And he was like, oh, I'm beatboxing. I was like, what is that? And him and I became very, very good friends. And throughout that rest of the semester, because him and I were very good friends, he taught me a few things about beatboxing. And he gave me my first track of about six, six tracks on the CD of Razel, Kenny Muhammad, Wu-Tang, De La Soul, Common. And that was the year that I was introduced to hip hop. And that's very shocking to a lot of people to hear that because I was born and raised in a very Latin culture. My mother being Puerto Rican, my father being Dominican. So every weekend was like a barbecue, just like. <laughs> you know, and so within my beatboxing, there's a lot of, lot of movement, a lot of spiritual emotion that I express myself through my beatboxing. And I want to really notate that because when I give some examples, some great music that I could do, you finally understand and put the pieces together. You guys want to hear something really cool? Yeah. So the very first thing when I got introduced to beatboxing was Razel, If Your Mother Only Knew. When I heard this at the age of 16, it blew my mind. And I, I dedicated myself three months, literally three months, to learn how to talk and beatbox at the same exact time. And it went something like this. <laughs> that right there. <laughs> so that right there, that was when I, I, <laughs> I submitted myself into my first year of my, a talent show, a sophomore year of high school. I won first place. My principal himself was like, you're amazing. Oh my God, like how does that come out your mouth? And, and I was like, I don't know, a lot of practice. <laughs> and, and it's so funny because I want to start by saying, I do go by JRB Box, but my real name is Jorge Amparo Jr. <laughs> and um, being George and Jorge growing up, you know, I was just a cute, cuddly kid in high school with a lot of curly hair and kind of a little chunky on the all sides. But uh, in the long run, my personality is definitely shined throughout the classroom. My, uh, my friends that supported me believed in me all the way from high school all the way till now. And if it wasn't for the small stages in my life to build who I am now, I would not be here at Life is Beautiful 2016. Like. So on to the next chapter. I graduate and I start my first job. I was an elevator operator going at the, at the Stratosphere Tower, going up and down the elevators for seven hours with an hour break. 
And when I got introduced to hip hop and in beatboxing, that's all I dedicated myself is going like, One oh eight, you know. I was like, <laughs> and <laughs> when you see yourself in a mirror in this in this cubicle with all these mirrors, and you see yourself thirty two times in a reflection, you tend to kind of like have the shining effect. You start going crazy. So I was in the elevator always, all the time, like. <laughs> I just like, I would just be quiet when the doors open. And it's funny because these elevators are double decker. So whoever was below me or above me, they could hear what I was doing and they felt like there was music in the elevator when there's really no. <laughs> so that was a funny thing too. There's a lot of major stages in my life that were amazing. So on to the next part is being very innovative. Uh, being very innovative took me a lot of time to realize when I learned how to beatbox, I, I studied one way of just one man, one mic concept. Basically, how long can I go just like You know, and I, I was just practicing. And I would just, I would just get so hyped about it. And then I got introduced to another genre of music, which was like rock, country, uh, techno, EDM. And I started it's like, how can I mimic every other element that I base pretty much based off the basic of boots and cats, you know? <laughs> boots and cats. And that's the first thing when I broke it down, like boots and you know, I was like, okay, cool. Now, I want to be like a DJ, and I will study DJs like Jazzy Jeff and DJ AM, and, and I will see how they do crab scratches and all these different techniques and how they go, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to, gentlemen, I was like, man, that was amazing. <laughs> and that goes to the question, would you guys like to learn how to scratch real quick? Yeah? All right, cool, cool. So I want everybody to repeat after me. Say the name Eric. Now you take the C off the end of the name Eric and you get Eri. If you say that over and over again in the different tempos and different like notes, you get Right? Let's try it together as a group real quick. Ready? I'm going to start low. Ready? You got to do it with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. There you go. Look at that. See? <laughs> oh, right there. So that right there was really dope. Um, learning the fundamentals of beatboxing, understanding everything that I was doing and how I was able to incorporate while letting people know how to do it. When I went to go do a lot of elementary school tours on Nevada Reading Week on Dr. Seuss's birthday in March, I did an elementary school tour and I taught how to uh, third graders all the way to fifth graders how to beatbox, but also uh, taught them the fundamentals of reading. You know, reading music, reading people, reading body language, reading choreography from dancers, all the collaborations that I've did all through Las Vegas with amazing artists and amazing musicians all paid off because I didn't know anything in music background. I didn't know how to read music. I didn't know anything um, knowledgeable. I didn't know how to do anything. I just knew beatboxing. So I felt everybody. I felt what I was, my intuition was when I knew they were gonna go, you know, I feel like that was just the coolest thing if I go, so if I do a boomerang, they come back like, you know, I felt that, I felt. And also, and when I felt that, it, it, it definitely gave a connection to a lot of people that I work with that are great friends of mine and that believed in me and, and gave me all the power of, of self-confidence because there's nothing, there's no feeling like having somebody tell you, man, that was amazing. And 
I can't believe that we just did that because it was very priceless. From then on, this is at a young age too. This is starting when I was 19 and 20 years old. When I was 21, I snuck, I finally got, in, I was able to go into hip hop events and open mics. There was this first open mic out here in Las Vegas called Black Book Sessions. And Black Book Sessions was a once a month event where every artist, spoken word artist, poetry, anybody that had an art and a talent that wanted to speak their mind to come here and they had a live band. So no MP3s, no nothing. This live band will back you up and make you look like a million bucks just because they believe in you. I was waiting till 3 o'clock in the morning just to get on that microphone for a three-minute spot when I was 21. And through that, I met a lot of great DJs, made a lot of great artists, and it's just, it spread all through Las Vegas as JR. You know, and I started out as JR the vocal percussionist, and I didn't really find my name or find my branding until I was about 23. And uh, my first opportunity was when I was 22, and I collaborated with a DJ named DJ Boomer. And this guy worked at the Palms Hotel as a sound technician and ran pretty much set up for all the major DJs like Jazzy Jeff and DJ AM. And him and I believed in each other, and we built a concept of beatboxing and DJing. And we did a 15 minute set and we pitched it to Moon Nightclub when it was like the hottest Moon Night uh, Club to go to at the time. And we got approved for it. So at the age of 22, I was on a billboard in Las Vegas and I was so excited. And that was like when I was still like kind of chunky in all sides and long curly hair and ponytail. And from then on, that right there kind of escalated everything. And that's how I became JRB Box, and that's how I knew I, I wanted to do what I'm doing now for the rest of my life. I knew that this is all I want to do, you know? So I know I'm running out of time a little bit, but I'm gonna speed it up real quick because I got a lot of cool stuff I want to show everybody that I've been working on. Long story short, I used to have a vision. I made a reality. What I did was I became, I became a kind of person that could envision anything. As a beatboxer and a collaborator to a lot of men, many elements, I thought outside the box. So everybody could beatbox in, in the world that are very well, but to utilize your mind and be able to really experiment with offshore things, I created a concept that was really outside the box. Um, I collaborated with dancers, techno artists, rappers, uh, EDM, EDC, uh, country, when I did at Red Rock uh, Hotel. And I was thinking about like, DJs make a lot of money, right? Working in clubs, and they, they do the thing, and they do a lot of cool techniques, and they have their turntables. So what I did was I created a concept of looping and, and somewhat of a DJ. So what I did was I took an MPC, and I stuffed it with acapellas. And then I took my loop station that I do a RC505, and I use it as my, my canvas. So I build and produce a live beat, and I'm able to drop acapellas over it, as like if a DJ would. The coolest thing is, is having a producer's mindset. So producing is like a second nature of me now since through beatboxing. So what I'm gonna do next in the next six minutes and 30 seconds, I'm gonna freestyle some really dope stuff that I can do with just one man, one mic, and then show you some cool tips and tricks, all right? You guys ready? Yeah. Meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up and beatbox at the same time. <laughs> Watch it, turn it, leave it, stop formatting, punch it, bring it, get it, it, burn it, the beep, stop for dig rewind the beat. Mm, 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 mm,
It's so funny. Um, I don't know. I may just be able to loop because I'm running a little low out of time. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me right now. If you guys have any questions while I set up, let me know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if anything, I'll probably just do um, some dope looping since uh probably put this together. And you know what I mean? sound in this one guys can we get some sound is there anything right there maybe because this is turned off real quick there we go i don't know what's going on with this one but you guys it's a little bit of technical kind of a little technical difficulties but uh Forget about it. Let's just take it. So, <laughs> in four minutes is all I have left, and I will give you my everything. I will give you everything that I've worked so hard for, and um, I'll just thank you so much. My name is JR Beatbox. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you guys are the best, and here you go. <laughs> I'm like, I want a life. I like to say, I like, I want a life. I like to say, I like, I like, I want rocking the mic, and life is beautiful. <laughs>
I like to rock the mic back. It's like it's beautiful. 2016. I like to rock the mic back to shout out beautiful. 2016. I think we should pop some bottles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my name is JR, y'all.